Okay, now what we want to do is we want to say, is there a form up here? Is there something going on where what we're going to study are equations of a certain form? And I think it should be obvious to everybody what that form is. And so we're going to bury it inside a more complex framework. So we're going to consider the family of all functions. Now, the functions we're going to look at, they're going to map the integers, not just the positive integers, but the positive, negative, and integers. And they're going to map them somewhere. And the somewhere, in our case, is going to be the field C of complex numbers. Now, integers are, live inside the reals. The reals live inside the complex numbers. So we are expanding the set of things that we're talking about. Now, if I back up, All those functions are defined for positive integers only. If you remember when we talked about these, we did crazy things like we said, okay, let's make a, a let's define this thing at zero, but we'll define it at zero so that the equation works. Well, now we're gonna do more than that. We're gonna define it for all the negative numbers as well. So what does it mean to tile a minus 12 by 2 rectangle. Well, it has no physical meaning whatsoever. But it has meaning as a recurrence. And that's the sense in which we're going to be studying them. So again, we're considering the family of all functions which map the set of all integers to the field of complex numbers. OK. And now. Now, because you are Georgia Tech students, I can lay this slide on you. I want, but I want us to study it and read it carefully. What I have just described is an infinite dimensional vector space. Because if you have two functions which map z to c, integers to the complex numbers, I can talk about the sum of two functions. And I can also talk about a scalar multiple of a complex number times a function. So look at that line. That, there's two equations there. f plus g operating on n is f of n plus g of n. And the scalar product, alpha times f operating on n, is alpha on f of n. And I include this comment here. that. It should, you should look at that and, and recognize that there's operator overloading going on in those statements. Look at the one on the left. The plus sign appears on both sides. But on the left side, it's talking about the sum of functions. On the right side, it's talking about the sum of two complex numbers. Is that clear? On the right side, where we have the scalar multiple equation, on the first use of alpha f, we write alpha and f, concatenate them right next to each other. And we're now talking about the product of a complex number alpha times a function f. That product operates on n, and the answer is alpha times f of n. So the concatenation on the right-hand side is again indicating a product, but it's the product of two complex numbers. f of n is a complex number. Alpha is a complex number. You multiply them together. So multiplication is defined on the right. Addition is on the left. <clears throat> and it satisfies all the familiar properties for a vector space that you studied when you the calculus. The zero of this vector space is the zero function. It maps every integer to the complex number zero. There's a lot of meat on this slide. Now, somebody should be thinking, why did you say it's infinite dimensional? 
because most of your emphasis when you talked about vector spaces in calculus classes would be on finite dimensional. But why is this an infinite dimensional vector space? Can you think of some functions that are infinitely many in number that are linearly independent? There is no finite collection for which you can take a linear combination with all non-zero coefficients and get the zero function. Not so obvious, is it? But it will be. Trust me. The, the fact that this is an infinite dimensional vector space will be quite clear. But first, it, it, the, the idea that it is a vector space, that's, that's clear. You've got sums, you've got products, you've got associative laws, you've got distributive, everything, everything is good. 